Welcome to part two of Fat Loss for Women Over 40 Series Holiday Edition. Today, we're going to be talking about nutrition. My name is Catherine Tanaka. I'm a fitness, nutrition, and mindset coach, really supporting women over the age of 35 to optimize their nutrition, optimize their metabolism, and really thrive through perimenopause and into menopause. Today, we are going to talk about nutrition. This is an amazing hack that I want you to think about. So I run a 100-day transformation program. So we really go deep week after week into nutrition, into biohacking our nutrition, into optimizing our nutrition, especially for busy women that want to feel and look their best. And so we had a big conversation this week about nutrition and how to navigate this time of year. Ability, busy holiday seasons, whether it's Christmas or going into you know summer holidays or any holidays, in fact, is a challenging time to navigate when people are looking to optimize their fitness, their fat loss, and their health. And it is completely doable at the same time time. Okay. So we were talking about nutrition and looking at the next three, sorry, four weeks, which literally, if you break it down is let's see, seven plus seven is 14, 28 days of meals, right? 28 days of food times three meals a day is 84 meals in the next four weeks. Here's the thing. Everyone thinks that going into December means that it was free for all, that things are going to get derailed and they might as well throw in the towel. I'm here to tell you that that does not need to be the case. In fact, if you actually look at and plan out the month, you will see that it's completely doable. So I want you in your mind's eye to really look at what does the next four weeks look like? For example, I have a Christmas gathering on Saturday. On Sunday, we have a Christmas lunch with my family. Next week, I'm hosting a uh, dinner party on Friday. I'm sure we're going to eat out on Saturday. The following week on Wednesday, I'm hosting my business mastermind, right? We're doing dinner in my house. And then I'm sure I'm going to go for dinner with my daughter because my husband and my son are away. And then there's Christmas and then we're going to be in Mexico. So I'm sure there's going to be a couple meals. And then I'm also hosting New Year's. So let's see all in all, let's call that 11 meals. Okay. 11 meals out of 84 meals between now and New Year's. Okay. So let's think about that. 11 meals divided by 84 meals in the next four weeks. That gives me a percentage of 13%. What I teach my clients from a nutrition perspective is the 80-20 rule, that if we are on track and goal supporting for 80% of the time, we can get phenomenal results. Look at what I just demonstrated. Those meals that are out of control or those meals that are, you know, treat meals and meals that are gala meals and out with friends and out for dinner, out for the holidays, Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, whatever you celebrate, shows that we can we are going to be 13% of the time not on plan or not in full control, air quotes, as we think. Now this, when you look in 80-20 perspective is like, we're totally winning. That's 87% of the time you can be completely on track. So think about the mindset shift that is possible here. If you know that only 13% of the next four weeks is going to be not on track, not goal supporting, meaning that you're going to have a piece of cake, a glass of wine, maybe even two, or all the treats and hors d'oeuvres that are completely different than you usually have. That is a huge win. What we also know from a nutrition standpoint is that you can be on track when you're out and about, right? For example, I'll give you one of the hacks that I talk to a lot of my private clients, private clients that go to a lot of client lunches, business meeting, gala, you know, holiday events is start with hydration and look for the hors d'oeuvres that are yummy and that you want to try, but are also protein rich. That's not going to send you in the tailspin of, you know, you know, your insulin crashing or craving more sugar, right? If you start that way and also don't go into a meal starving, like starving yourself all day because you think you're going to save yourself for that meal, then you can be in control. Then you go in not famished, not wanting to grab everything and can make really smart decisions, right? And then also knowing that there's a meal in place coming up that you're like, okay, do I want the pot roast? Do I want the steak? Do I want the, you know, 
whatever it is that they're ser- serving. And also knowing, am I going to have a, a drink? How many drinks are going to be goal supportive knowing that I need to do X, Y, Z tomorrow, knowing that I want to be able to continue on this trajectory. If you can go into even situations where you're not controlling the nutrition with a plan, that is so supportive. So you can be like, okay, I'm going to have a couple of glasses of wine. I'm also going to have a couple hors d'oeuvres and this, I'm going to limit it to like three instead of 12, right? I'm also going to have some dessert, but I'm not going to eat the whole thing or have three desserts. I'm going to choose one or two that I really love and have three or four bites of each. That is a plan that literally allows you to have your cake and eat it too. So I want you to think about over the next four weeks, what do you have coming up that you know are going to be these meals that you may not be fully quote unquote in control of, but how can you continuously put yourself in the driver's seat so that you can feel really good about this? Kind of like we we spoke about in our um, movement and movement mindset episode part one. This is exactly that. If you can exercise this mindset of saying, huh, I can be on track 87% of the time. This will not only support you physiologically that you're like, okay, I can totally wait for Friday night. I can also wait for that Wednesday dinner. I can also wait for that gala. I can also wait for that brunch and stay on track with my meal prepping and planning between now and then. That will set you up physiologically that being on off track and it's not really off track, being outside of goal supporting is only 13%. You can be like, wow, that's amazing. Your physiology will thank thank you. Your cells will thank you. Your metabolism will thank you. And then from a mindset perspective, you're like, oh, I can totally do this. This doesn't mean it has to be a derailing. And this doesn't mean that I need to make it a free-for-all. And I also want to remind you that you can have cake any time of the year. And if you put yourself behind the eight ball in December, right, if you use the entire month as a free for all, it's going to be really difficult to, I don't want to say recover from, but it's really difficult to come back from, right? Because if you use this time to get really addicted to sugar and fats and all the sweet treats, not to say that you can't have them, but if it is an everyday occurrence, if wine becomes an everyday occurrence, it is difficult to detox from that. And it's going to take you several weeks in the new year to reset detox from that so that you can start on your trajectory of however you want to start the new year, right? Healthy eating or whatever it is that you're doing. And from a mindset perspective, feeling like you have to be the comeback kid again and really get back on track and this momentum will again take you a couple weeks to just get back in the conversation. So from a nutrition standpoint, I want this part two and come back, listen to it, save it, listen to it again to remind you, right? Your nutrition mindset makes a difference and following this plan and really thinking about how can I intentionally go into the next four weeks before the end of the year can really set you up for success. I really hope that this served you. Make sure you stay tuned for part three, where we talk about the mindset of being all in. This was something else we spoke about in my uh, 100 day mastermind, where I support busy women to transform their fitness, their nutrition, their lives. I'll see you on the next episode.